getting a divorce after my wife cheated on me. I-29 learned a few months ago that my wife 28 of 5 years had cheated on me with a trainer at the gym we were attending to. I had a difficult couple of weeks coping with my emotions and determining where to go. At the time, I opted to remain with her since I still loved her, and we had two children 4 and 8. The oldest was a kid from her previous relationship, whom I adopted after we married. We went to marital therapy for a few sessions after deciding to attempt to work things out. I was determined to make changes, but my wife did all she could to spin a tail and make it seem as though everything was my fault. She would make promises in therapy about making changes and attempting to restore the relationship, but it was all for show. She stopped coming to the gym, but she still looked at the gym's website every day to see a photo of the man. She erased her browser history and deleted messages slash emails on a regular basis. I knew she had something to conceal and checking up on her was giving me worry, so I stopped. We looked to be growing closer over the next several months, and I felt we were on the mend. Until now, that is. Today, one of my children offered me her iPad in order for me to watch a program on it, and he had her messages open. I discovered a series of communications between my wife and one of her classmates, in which her classmate looked to be seeking to set up her son with my wife, and my wife appeared to be thrilled. My wife was studying at this lady's place today, and when I phoned, my calls were repeatedly left unanswered. I questioned my wife about the texts when she returned home. She revealed that she wants to be with someone else and was merely acting to make me happy. I informed her that I believe we should divorce since I don't see her changing and being loyal in the relationship. In relation to the divorce procedure, I am concerned about a number of aspects. I now have a fairly well-paying job, about 130k per year, yet I am still saddled with more than $100,000 in student loan debt. She is presently enrolled in a one-year program at a local university. She had previously worked in a number of occupations, but none of them were very lucrative, and she seldom stayed in one place for more than a year. In addition, we purchased a house two years ago. Despite the fact that the title is in both of our names, the mortgage is only in my name since I have a far better credit score. In addition, we still owe money on two autos that we haven't paid off yet. My home is in the state of Pennsylvania. When it comes to divorce fees, alimony estimates if any are required due to adultery and the appearance of future infidelity, and child support and custody. I'm particularly interested in what to expect. We got married soon after she confessed to cheating on me and filed for divorce. At the time, she said that she did want alimony or child support and that I could retain the house. Would the court order any of these things regardless of her assertions? Is my massive college debt taken into account when determining alimony and child support, given that it absorbs a significant portion of my income, as for how we should approach the issue of divorce with our children, I'm not sure what to say. This will be a traumatic time in all of our lives, and any advice would be much welcome at this time. Now, look at some replies, CM. Generally, whose name, something is in doesn't matter. What will matter is that you're high income and she isn't. You'll pay 20-25% of your income to her even with 50-50 custody, until she can make an income. Spousal support slash alimony. That's more nuanced, but add another 25%, easily for a few years at least, unless you are in an at-fault state and can prove it. If she doesn't want alimony or child support, you should cut a deal immediately and support your children outside of required arrangements. Take that deal all day long. Note, she can reassess child support almost at any time, but once she cuts an alimony deal, it's fixed. A divorce without lawyers, or one lawyer, under these agreed terms is best for you. Read online about telling the kids. Generally, you can't talk about the affair. If your wife is still involved, you need to get in front of the mind-blowing possibility that she'll want to involve the kids. Best case, agree to terms before she decides to do what she wants. Op. We had a talk tonight, and I think we might go the route of using a mediator. She did say that she would like child support, but isn't expecting alimony. We came up with a possible way to share custody that would work with my work schedule. I think PA is in a fault state, but haven't looked into it too deeply. We are remaining civil towards each other, and we want each other to be happy and not struggling, but I also don't want her getting half of my paycheck, as that would drastically decrease my quality of life. CM. Pennsylvania is a fault state. So if you have evidence of her affair, you can file under adultery. Filing under adultery will help you avoid alimony and other assets, 
but it won't help with child support. That depends entirely on how good parents the two spouses are and how good a lawyer you have. Also, I'd recommend getting paternity tests for the children on the off chance that she's been doing this before this incident. Ah, I don't have physical evidence of the initial affair, but she has admitted it to several people, so I could use them as witnesses if needed. I do have evidence of her trying to get set up with another guy. In regards to the kids, the eldest is definitely not mine, as he was born before we met. I'm very certain that the youngest is mine. He looks a lot like me and when he was born, he looked exactly like my dad. I plan on contacting a mediator today to get advice and to hopefully set up an appointment for his to get everything started. We talked last night, and it sounds like we will try to keep things civil and not try to screw each other over. I made a suggestion to her try his morning that we should wait till after December 31 to have everything finalized so I don't get hit with a hefty tax bill. I also suggested each of us having legal custody of one child, but having a 50-50 split in time, so that we can each file as head of household for future taxes and we would each claim one dependent. Story 2 My ex-girlfriend and my brother My ex-girlfriend was the most important person in my life. She was the driving force behind my decision to come out sooner than I had anticipated. Throughout the process, she supported me in being myself and demonstrated that there was nothing wrong with my personality. It wasn't until I met my ex-girlfriend that I realized I was socially awkward. Because I didn't know how to engage with other people, I was always by myself. I used to go to classes and sit alone at the back of the room. Everything about me changed the moment she walked through the door. I started playing with my hair and makeup and began combing it. She was really gorgeous and she erupted into laughter. We became buddies when she insisted on knowing my last name and my maiden name. We had a good relationship. It happened in a forest when we were shooting nature for a collage project that we shared our first kiss. It had been my first kiss and I was overjoyed. We had been dating for over seven months when I decided it was time to inform my family about my orientation, which included the fact that I am a lesbian. Everyone, with the exception of my brother, handled the situation well. It worried me since we were so close and I relied on his love and support to get through the difficult times. I made the decision to put the relationship on hold in order to concentrate on reconciling with my brother. It lasted around a month in duration. My ex-girlfriend volunteered to talk with him on my behalf, and I readily accepted. It didn't take long for her to start behaving oddly towards me. Even though I tried all I could to get her to open up, all she kept saying was that she needed to think about the relationship. Later in the week, my cousin informed me that she had seen them taking photos along the coast and felt it odd given their proximity to the water. Being that she is in lesbian, I informed her that there was nothing to be concerned about. She had began sleeping with my brother, and they had managed to keep it a secret for so long that I was completely damaged, and everything in my life had come crashing down around me. I found myself reverting to my previous shady, reclusive, and socially incompetent personality all of a sudden. It's been five years since the event and I'm still not over it. My brother and I no longer talk, and I avoided my ex-boyfriend as much as I possibly could until we graduated from high school together. I'm still in a state of shock and agony. It's still a source of discomfort. It's had an effect on everyone and everything in my immediate vicinity.